Thank you, Major. Thank you for being here. Tonight's invocation pledge will be led by District 10. And in District 10, it will be Kevin Daughtry from uh, Sycamore Church of Christ, who is the youth and the family minister. Let's pray together. Dear God, we know you're an awesome God. And Father, we just uh, thank you tonight for all the See, um, is Terry, is Mr. Randolph, Commissioner Randolph, is he absent tonight? He is. All right. May I? Mr. Casting. All right. Let me have your hand set. Would you mind calling the road? All right. Good deal. A couple of things have changed. Number one, uh, this is new and, and uncharted waters for me. If I can find the mouse, here we go. Uh, we have a, 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 a wonderful IT team, Jameson and Brian, here tonight in case I fall by the wayside. Those guys have been wonderful to help me. Tonight, I want to tell you, your confirm button, the confirm button that you have it, always had at the button, bottom of your uh, uh, handset, no longer is in operation. So we, we don't have to do confirm anymore. So I'm going to hit tally. And we did that. And you see every... Did I? We're all right. I already messed we up. Don't have a form. Hang on. I wish to meet you. All right. See ya. All right, let's back out. Uh, all right, guys. We go back to where? Brian. Told you. We don't go to next. Now, okay, hit one button too quick. Let's try this again. Everybody take your handsets and now press yes and stop right there because confirm will not work. <laughs> Thank the Lord. All right. Everybody hit. Jerry. Okay. 
Hey, we in? All right. Huh? We got three absent. So one, two, three. Let's hit tally. Now. See, got a great staff, I'm telling you. All right, Mr. Chairman, you have 21 present, three absent. There is a quorum. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. Uh, gentlemen from the IT department, thank you for being here tonight. Yes. Appreciate your support. Item number five, approval of the agenda. Motion to approve. Second. I have a motion to second on the agenda. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, any opposed? We have an approved agenda. Item number six, approval of the minutes of the previous meeting. Second. Have a motion and second on the minutes. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? The minutes have been approved. Thank you. Item number seven, <coughs> unfinished business and action thereon by the board. A, under seven, report to standing committees. Planning committee? No unfinished business. Fiscal review committee? No unfinished business, sir. And nominating Mr. Randolph's not here. I assume they have no unfinished business. Item B, report of special committees. Item C, other unfinished business. All right, number eight, new business and action thereon by the board, report of standing committees. Number one, planning committee. Thank you. The planning committee recommends in item A that the speed limit for Old Mill Road be set at 35 miles per hour, and I so move. Thank you. Have a motion and second. Any discussion on the motion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? And that passes. Thank you. Thank you. That completes this plan. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Number two, Fiscal Review Committee. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Item A, Re Fiscal Review recommends approval of budget amendments to County General. I so move. I have a motion and second. Any discussion on the budget amendments for the County General Fund? <coughs> All right, Mr. Clerk, would you please call the roll? All right, ladies and gentlemen, if you'll take your hand, says, if you favor the motion, vote yes. If you do not favor the motion, vote no. Everyone, please vote. Stop right there, please. All right. If you'll notice on the screen tonight, can everybody see the screen good? All right. Screen. If you'll notice, if it says beside your name tonight, vote locked. That means it is locked until I... So I hit here, so this is Ready, Mr. Clerk? Ready. Thank you, sir. Item B, uh, Fiscal Review recommends approval of the budget amendments to the General Purpose School, the School Nutrition, and the Extended School Program, and I so move. Second. There's a motion to second. Any discussion? All right, Mr. Clerk. All right. Same thing, ladies and gentlemen. If you take your hand, says, if you favor the motion, vote yes. If you not favor the motion, vote no. Everyone, please vote. And it will stop you automatically right there. All votes are in. Anyone wish to change their vote anywhere? All right. <coughs> yes, zero, no, three absent, motion carried. Item C, uh, Fiscal Review recommends approval of the budget amendments to the Road Department Fund. I so move. Second. Have a motion to second. Any discussion on the motion? All right, Mr. Clerk. All right, ladies and gentlemen, take your hand set. If you favor the motion, vote yes. If not favor the motion, vote no. Everyone, please vote. And it will stop you right there. All votes are in. Anyone wish to change your vote anywhere? All right. Here we go. Mr. Chairman, we have 21 voting yes, zero no, three absent. Motion carries. All right. 
Thank you, Mike. Item D, Physical Review, recommends approval of budget amendments to the Solid Waste Sanitation Fund. And again, I so move. Can we have a motion and a second? Any discussion on motion? Okay, Mr. Clerk, please call the vote. Ladies and gentlemen, take your hands once again. If you favor the motion, vote yes. If not favor the motion, vote no. Everyone, please vote. And it will stop you there. All votes are in. Anyone wish to change their vote anywhere? All right. Mr. Chairman, you have 21 voting yes, zero no, three absent when the roll is called. Motion carries. Item E, uh, Physical Review, recommends approval to set the July 2019 committee and commission meetings as follows. Committee meetings on July 27th, 29th, I so move. Second. Have a motion, second. Any discussion on changing the meetings? Can we do, can we do a voice vote on this, Mr. Part there? We can, can we? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. Thank you. Item F. Physical Review recommends approval for the Putnam County Emergency Services to write off uncollectible debt in the amount of $466,539.39. Let's get that $0.39. Cents. What do you say, cuz? Uh, I so move. Second. Have a motion to second. Any discussion? Who, who seconded that? Mr. Martin. Mr. Martin. Second. All right. Thank you. Any discussion? All right, Mr. Clerk, please call the right, Ladies vote. and gentlemen, if you take your handsets, favor the motion, vote yes. If not favor the motion, vote no. Everyone, please vote. All votes are in. Anyone wants to change their vote anywhere? All right, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much. Mr. Chairman, you have 21 voting yes, zero no. Three absent with a roll is called. Motion carries. All right, item G, Fiscal Review recommends approval for the Solid Waste Department to write off uncollectible debt in the amount of $2,496.92. I so move. Second. There's a motion and a second. Any discussion? Mr. Clerk, please call the roll. All right, ladies and gentlemen, if you take your hand sets, you favor the motion, vote yes. If you're not in favor of the motion, vote no. Everyone, please vote. Stop right there. It'll stop you automatically. Any votes? All right, all votes are in. Anyone wish to change your vote anywhere? Mr. Chairman, we have 21 voting yes, zero no, three absent when the roll is called. Motion carries. Great. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Item H. Physical Review recommends approval of the consideration of Gatsby 34 amendments as well as any cleanup amendments in order to properly close out the physical year. I so move. We have a motion, a second. Any discussion? <coughs> These were included in tonight. They were handed out on your table. No discussion. Mr. Clerk, I'll ask you to call All the roll, please. All right. In favor of the motion, take your handsets to vote yes. Do not favor the motion, vote no. Everyone, please vote. Stop right there. Well, it's, it's so hard for me to break that habit. All right. All those are in. Anyone wish to change their vote anywhere? Mr. Chairman, I have 21 voting yes, zero no, three absent when the roll is called. Motion carries. And item I from Physical Review recommends approval to implement a $50 reinspection fee for the codes department and I so move. Second. Okay, I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Uh, we're not spending right? we're, we're, we're implementing we're the fee. fee. Yes. Okay. You want to clear that? Yes, here we go. You ready? Any discussion? All right, Mr. Clerk, please call the roll. All right, ladies and gentlemen, if you favor the motion, vote yes. If you're not in favor of the motion, vote no. All right, all votes are in. Anyone wants to change their vote anywhere? <coughs> Mr. Chairman, we have 21 voting yes, zero no, three absent. Motion carries. Concludes fiscal review, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Item number three, nominating committee. There's no business there. Moving on to B, report, report of special committees. Yes, sir. Where are we on the short term rental? The committee met last. 
it comes to planning in July. So we'll hear a report next month. Thank you. <coughs> Uh, C, resolutions. There are no resolutions, Mr. Chairman. D, election notice. All right, here we go. Quite a list. Robin Beckman, Levi Blaylock, Jennifer Brooks, Tammy Burchett, Vicki Callahan, Adrian Canfield, Starlina Cope, Molly Cowan, Jessica L. Daniels, Tammy Edwards, Reagan Edwards, Phyllis June Garrett, Rhonda Gooding, George Kevin McCaleb, Donna J. McSpadden, Judy Miller, Christy Mueller, Melba Murphy, Pfeiffer, Salama Ponce Hernandez, I did good, Michelle B. Price, Emma Jean Puckett, Lisa Reeves, Cheryl, Cheryl L. Sandlin, Trina D. Stevens, Richard A. Seitz, Stite, excuse me, Jonathan Turner, Rebecca Lynn Walker, Ashley Waters and Tanya Weaver. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion on the notaries? Mr. Clerk, when you're ready. All right, and up. this one we do have to vote. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you will take your handsets and just go ahead and we always vote yes for all this anyway, please, because all we're doing is just basically saying, well, I'm going to go ahead and push. That it works out good. We thank you. It's 21 voting for Mr. Chairman. Three absent. That motion carries. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. Item E, other new business. Recognize cash flow analysis for the general purpose school fund. There's no action required. Number two, hear from Mary Randy Porter on available land around the Justice Center. Mr. Porter. Is that mic on, Randy? I don't, is it? I'm, I'm sorry, my bad. It is now. Yeah, it is now. Thank you. Okay, so when we started the um, started the process with the started the process with the jail study, uh, one of the things that was going to be an issue was is if we use part of the parking lot for the uh, addition onto the jail, where we're going to need some land for parking. As you know, we bought a small parking lot at Spring and Maple uh, back uh, a few months ago, and we're looking at uh, finishing it, getting it paid for parking. That's about 55 spaces. I'm a planner. I, I look at planning for the it comes up rarely that it's available for sale. So over the last several months, uh, as we've been doing this jail study, I've been watching for land, talking to the owners of the land around the Justice Center to see if any of it's available. Uh, I handed you out a handout tonight that has five pieces of property that is available in case we would need it uh, if you decide that to add on to the jail and the Justice Center uh, that you could either use for parking. them numbered. Uh, the parcel that we bought a few months ago is, is this one uh, right here that's over to the left of the number one. Uh, that's being converted into a parking lot currently. I hope to have that ready sometime in the next few weeks. Uh, the first parcel is the large one where Jim's Inn used to be. Uh, that business is closed. Uh, it actually shows as two parcels there, but that's been converted into one, uh, one large parcel. Then you have parcel number two, that's the old triangle that we used to call it down on the east side triangle. There's three parcels there. Uh, oops, sorry. There's three parcels there.
All right, sorry. Uh, number three is two parcels put together by the same owner. Number four is a parcel, and number five is a parcel. So what I've done is, is I have options on each one of these pieces of property, and I'm making you aware of them. Uh, the jail addition, uh, and the justice center ad uh, addition, whatever you decide to do, I want you to know what land was available around the justice center to be purchased. Each one of the parcels, uh, mountain parcel numbers, who owns it, and how much that they're asking for the property. Realizing that all, all of these owners started out at a higher price, these are what I've negotiated down to that I think is probably close to their bottom dollar as to what they will take, if not their bottom dollar. On some of them, I know it is their bottom dollar. Uh, the key on number one and number two is if you want number one, So when you start looking at land that's around the Justice Center, uh, there's very little vacant land that doesn't have something on it. Number one and number two is the largest parcels I know of anywhere around that are, um, that are vacant. Both of those pieces of property, uh, and I suggest all of you go out over the You uh, decided that you wanted those. Included in number one is if you buy that property, the old Jim's Inn will be demolished and removed by the owner of the property if you decide you want that one. Um, the Most of them for the land. Randy, excuse me. Did you say that on number one option that the uh, seller would pay to destroy that building? And yes, that's included in the price. Randy, for this property between four and five, four sixty-four East Hudgens. I haven't, I haven't made any really contact on that one because the way the property laid out uh, and it be our newer property, I figured the price was going to be so much higher on it that it wouldn't be something we'd half of that, if that's what the commission decides, it's, uh, we'll know shortly from the committee what they're going to recommend. But if you decide to use half of that, then having that property to the side of it for future additions to the jail uh, would be the thing. I think that that property would be property over here. would be the key property to park on. Realizing that both of those pieces of property have been filled with rock and they're very stable so I mean you could actually build on them if you needed to. My thought was confined to the parking lot. To the, uh, 
to the parking lot here, uh, the, the addition would be in the parking lot. Uh, I, and I know one of the commissioners, maybe in Commissioner Bennett, that talked about planning out for 30, 40, or 50 years. Uh, on the, on the uh, architects where we did the second phase. They're doing core drilling. They actually have already done quite a bit of core drilling over on the parking lot. Uh, so we should have those results back. I'm guessing July would be my guess. Mr. Chairman, I'm just answering I, questions if you yeah, want. We, we, the, we don't have the board, so raise your okay. hand and I'll recognize Commissioner Williams. How many acres is this all together? Uh, Jonathan, I didn't tally it up. Um, so I'm just trying to think of a per acre price what we're looking at here. Uh, most of the smaller lots are a half. Uh, these lots over here are, you know, two or three acres. I'm guesstimating. I didn't pull the acreage on any of them. You can, I can get that for you if you want me to email that out for you. I mean, this ballpark would be five acres all together-ish. Oh, I think it's more than that. <laughs> I'd say six to six. Seven somewhere in that neighborhood. Anyone else? I mean, Mr. Martin. Randy going back to three, four, five, and then five, and then five, three, and five. Two and three. Three is two lots. No, three and four, and then five, and then five, and five, and four. These two here. Yes. Uh, no. Two different, uh, yes. Two different structures. Two different structures. Yes. Uh, when, you, when you look at it, it only makes sense to me. I can't hear. Jim, can he speak in the mic? Jim, Talk in your mic. When you look. Uh, got it on. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Uh, when you when you look at four, three, four, and five, at some point we're going to need what I'm going to call six, six and seven. Those two, those two. I can approach those if you want. Me I, to. I certainly think you should because. Why would we buy three and four and five without six and seven? I mean, I, I don't expect you to give me an answer, but but it seems to me like we need to investigate that, and I really w wish you would. I will. I really wish you would. The others make sense also, but three, four, five, and maybe six and seven uh, even make more sense grouped together because of the proximity to the right. to the other property and you can you can you can attach those a lot easier. But you you've done a good job and you're right. You're exactly right. Driving around, you won't see much available. Two or three or four, five, six years from now, won't be any available, most likely. And when we turn dirt on any one of those, the price of all the other goes up. It's just mm -hmm. the way it way it works. So Thanks for doing what you're doing because now it's time for us to make some decisions. Well, and you know my attitude. I don't want to come to you with uh, got to do it now. So I didn't want to wait on these properties until the, the jail study came back and then bring it to you all at once. I want you to be able to go out and look at these properties and make a judgmental decision ahead of time and it not be something. And they're there for the next 180 days uh, for you to make a decision if you decide you want any of them. Thanks for doing that. Commissioner Watson. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I uh, just had a question, and I wanted to point something out, too. Uh, the question would be, would these... Uh,
say, Fun Fest and Cook It on the Square and the other public events that we have in this general area? Absolutely. I think lots one and two, especially if you use those for parking. The one, the existing one that we've already bought. And when we start looking at one and two, uh, when you look at what we paid for the parking lot where we tore down the old building zone, those both of those lots price-wise are very comparable to what we paid for that lot when you start looking at the size. They're bigger than that lot is, but when you start looking at that size lot, for a while too so if somebody wanted to use it for office or other sorts of space I mean they would have right. if there was that traction they would have done that already so there's need they need to be used for something they're seems like a, a good spot to put a parking lot for the future it seems like Commissioner Wallace funding where would the funding come from my thing would be is that it be attached to the bond that you're going to also, there's another document that you have. Uh, it's a resolution that's just for your, it's a draft. There's a new requirement on bonding that if you decided that you wanted to pay for anything uh, that's associated with any bond that you're going to issue, where it's a jail or a school or whatever, uh, you have to pass this resolution ahead of time before you ever make any of those. just a number that was in the resolution that the financial advisor drafted. That could be a million, that could be 500,000. You make it anything you want to. It's just you any purchase of land or any of this other stuff that we may need to do this unless you pass this first to be included in the bond. So at some point, we probably want to pass this. And if you use it, great. And if you don't, it doesn't hurt anything. It just uh, gives us the option to be able to include that in the bond. Mr. Christopher? Uh, Randy, could you educate me a little bit on the zoning issues here? So these residential properties, if the county purchases them, the county Exempt, but we try to be nice with the city and go through the process. Uh, and but two of the properties have already been, been re to commercial. When you, when you say we we try to be nice for six for six, I'm just going to keep using six and seven here. Yeah. For six and seven, are those haven't been rezoned? No. So what would need to happen? We know we normally go through the process at the city of rezoning them. Uh, but I'll let Jill speak to that. Well, Randy's exactly right. I guess in, in the interest of being a good neighbor, we usually do that. But the law says that we're exempt from city <laughs> zoning for county property fraud. But we don't have to do it. So Randy, there's an issue with uh, EMS or whatever. Health department. Health department and all of that out there. Process that legally we're not required to do it. So, so you could go ahead and if you contacted the owners of six and seven, uh, you could get an option there potentially. Mm -hmm. And once that, once that purchase is closed, then do whatever you want to with the property. Legally. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Williams? Uh, one is to, to, I guess, piggyback off of his question. If the county was to go through the city zoning process, if we subject 
forfeit our ability to be exempt? No. We don't forfeit. Okay. Um, secondly, just, just to kind of point out some, some rough math here, I added all the parcels up together and it comes up to uh, 2178000 acre. Um, so, I mean, it, it certainly, it's certainly worth considering, um, but at the same time, I, I think uh, alternatives are also worth considering, but that's going to be up to the, the entire body to decide. But that's pretty expensive property. Downtown Google, and it's, uh, there were some others that were a lot more expensive, but I understand what you're saying. Commissioner Atwood? I, I, I like most I recognize the obligation we have if we do this jail and if we take part of the parking that's going to require us to do so. So uh, having said that, let me, let me say this. It's a good idea for us. Uh, to at least accept the resolution at this point so we can move that process forward. It doesn't obligate. We still, and it doesn't mean we have to spend $5 million. So what it means is we can spend up to $5 million for the purpose of these purchases. So I'm going to make a motion that we approve the resolution, Mr. Chair. That's, that's my, my motion. I'd like to second that. I have a motion and a second on the resolution declaring the intent of Putnam County to re obligations to be issued by the county. I memorized all that. Oh my God. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Any discussion? Commissioner Williams. One last question. We pass this resolution and between now and the time any money is spent, we find a different piece of property. Could it, could it apply to that other piece of property? Absolutely. That's my, okay. Mr. Bradford. Does that mean that that $5 million is tied up? No. We can't use it if anything else comes up? No. It only gives you the ability to anything that you may want to purchase or may want to be included in the bond that you can. Mr. Atwood. Yeah, I'd like to ask one more question or ask you to do one more thing, Randy, if you will. Uh, parcels 3, 5, 4, and 5, could you maybe give us an estimate on what it would take to take those houses off? What would be the additional cost of those two? three part pieces of property. Have you done that? Yeah, well, one of the Atwood would be the parcel that we, the parking lot that we've destroyed those two buildings on. That was about six or seven thousand dollars. Lots to bring a track hoe in and, and take them out. We took two buildings out on that parcel and don't hold me to the exact amount, but it was in that six, seven thousand dollar range. Any more discussion? Commissioner Christopher? Sure, one more. So, so the, uh, the opening line here in, includes for the purpose of construction of a jail. So is, is there any reason why the cap is five million? And when you start looking at if you purchase property, if you, uh, the architect's fees and so forth, we, didn't, we couldn't add it up to be more than five, but now you can make it any number you want to. Well, I'm just, I mean, if, if it's in, inclusive of the actual um, construction. No, 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 no. It's not inclusive of the construction. It'd be anything. To the bond. Absolutely. Gotcha. Any more discussion? Commissioner Watson. Just a quick question. I guess uh, I think it may have been explained already, but with this uh, motion, is this uh I go back to, to two examples. One, if you were around when the Justice Center was built, that whole block
try to think out the next 30 or 40 years at some point uh, that land's going to be used for something else that may not be available. So uh, I've saw it happen multiple times in my years as county government that we didn't buy the property and you look back years later and you figure out that you should have. Well, the other thing to keep in mind too as well is I know some communities have built courthouse annexes because, I mean, just like we have, we've gone down the county services drive, we've just out, outgrown. So that is a potential, like you said, looking out 10, 20 years down the road, I'm not saying that we'll do that, but that is a potential thought too as well down the road as we do, do we need more office space or do we need more uh, other things as well too. So at least that, like you said, that property is still there and we don't have to be coming to this again 10, 20 years down the road when right. the property is twice as much or more. Well, as we well know, the price property is not going to go down in the future. I mean. Uh, real estate agent there on the commission. I mean, I think she can talk to that. Uh, it's it's going to go up in the future, so um, it just makes good sense for us to be planning for that far out if we can. Commissioner Dunn? Yes, so all five of these property owners, five parcels, Uh, the other thing that was is, $100 per parcel. Right, yeah. right, still. Uh, it's very cheap to study very, property. Very cheap, yeah. And these folks are, uh, that own this property, I mean, they're interested in the county too. Some of them you know as you look at the names, and uh, so they're willing to take a, a chance. Over the other thing is on this declaration resolution, uh, is that just a typo on the March 18th date? Where are you looking at? Page two. two and page four, I think. Yes, Both reference March we'll, 18th. We'll make that whatever the date of the county commission meeting okay. is. Okay. Mr. Wrightwood? Yeah, I, 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 let me wear another hat now. I'm a parliamentarian, so I can make sure that we understand the motion. The motion that we're talking about is just the resolution at this point. We'll debate the properties, whether we buy any. All, all this motion is allowing us to add it to the jail bond if, it, if we decide to buy some. Uh, so we're just fulfilling a, 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 a what? Uh, I, I guess uh, I'm sorry. Uh, I require. Thank you. I, my mind was not functioning. All we're doing with this, my motion, is just fill, fulfilling a requirement in case we decide to buy it. And so I hope, again, Mr. Chairman, I'm not trying to take your job, but I do want to make sure they understood what my motion was. Uh, I'm not saying let's buy five million dollars worth of property. I'm just saying let's qualify ourselves if we need to bond for it. Is that? I was getting there, but thank okay. You. I'm sorry, Mr. That's okay. I, I, That's okay. Any more discussion on the resolution? We're not purchasing anything tonight. I promise you. So if we are, I'm vastly confused. So any more discussion? All right, Mr. Clerk, will you please call the roll. This is a financial number. Even though we're not purchasing anything, we want we need a roll call. Be safe. All right, ladies and gentlemen, now please take your handsets. If you favor the motion to approve the resolution, vote yes. If you do not favor the motion, vote no. All votes are in. Does anyone wish to change their vote anywhere? All right, Mr. Chairman, you have 21 voting yes, zero no, and three absent when the roll is called. Motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. All right, we are now at announcements and statements. I have two items. Uh, first one, Mr. Stephen Maddox uh, had addressed, had actually contacted myself, <coughs> Mayor Porter, County Attorney Jeff Jones, about residential standards in Putnam County. I told him he'd be welcome to speak to us. He knows he's got three minutes. If you want to come up, Mr. Maddox, you can go ahead and start coming up to the public. He knows he's got three minutes. Uh, he's got handouts, but he didn't bring 24. So he's giving Randy and I a copy. We'll make copies and make sure you get that information for your review. Uh, Mr. Maddox, you now are on the clock, sir. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. My name is Stephen Maddox. I live in a small neighborhood on the border of Monterey Lake. Uh, some problems with substandard and non-permanent housing in our subdivision have resulted in health, safety, quality, and security issues, which haven't been addressed by either the developer or the county. 
This is a countywide problem which should be addressed with a countywide solution. There are some gaps in the current procedures and homeowners should not have to deal with these issues on a case-by-case -case basis. The material I have here includes several examples along with the proposal for simple rule and procedure changes to correct some of these problems. I know that the county lacks authority to enforce subdivision building restrictions and that there are currently no zoning rules. My proposal does not rely on subdivision restrictions or zoning rules. Imagine that you're exploring Putnam County. You find a five acre wooded lot in a restricted subdivision on the bluff overlooking the beautiful Monterey Lake. You build your dream home, which conforms to all. Soon after you move in, the developer leases the adjacent lot to an anonymous buyer who sets up a storage building with a port john in the front yard. Procedures currently apply only to permitted structures, not storage buildings or old motorhomes. Current rules also allow indefinite use of a portable toilet instead of a permitted septic system. Immediate use of residential land at minimal cost with no background check and the buyer's name is hidden by the contract. The county does not enforce subdivision restrictions and the developer has violates the restrictions for the subdivision, including the building type and minimum size. The current policy allows the permit applicant to proceed in property tax revenue. No structure should be used as a dwelling unless it meets the health, safety, and quality standards of the residential building code, regardless of where it is located. The county already has the authority to enforce the standards. I propose rule and procedure changes to enable the county to investigate and to enforce health, safety, and quality standards on all residential dwellings to prevent non-compliant, non-permitted structures restrictions and to require the applicant to sign a notice and waiver form before Respect, granting me 10 seconds to wrap up thank you okay health and safety standards are being ignored lives of risk property values are proposed rule and procedure changes thank you for listening thanks sir all right commissioners you'll get the handouts mr jones do you want to address this right quick Mr. Max, which subdivision? Thank you. I'm happy, however, the commission wants me to proceed. I'm happy to respond to Mr. Maddox. He was kind enough to send me a copy of his presentation early, so I've reviewed it. I can respond right now or County does not have the authority to enforce subdivision restrictions. Un Would you care to put send a uh, call and say Commissioner Martin? Would you care to write up something, send a mayor? Certainly, be that happy to do that. Well, that's my yeah, and you can compare it to Mr. Maddox's presentation. And are any of his concerns covered under the County Powers Act? Do what now? Are any of his concerns covered under the County Powers Act? No, they're not. says that the county has from the building codes for health and safety regulations is really referencing the county powers act which is doesn't cover the kind of things that he's concerned about but the bottom line is it has to do with subdivision restrictions anybody aware of thank you mr jones we do have a regional planning office i mean committee also that meets and discusses those developments as they occur they have to come before that in order to present their their building plan and being a member of that
or not least, but last, I want to wish uh, Commissioner Dan Wilson happy birthday. <laughs> Are you 30? Yeah, I told happy 30th birthday. <laughs> Any more announcements and statements? Motion to adjourn? Motion. We are adjourned.